we just clicked live here, so I'd like to, to welcome those. Um, this is week 23 here on the Highway 61 project. Um, got a little, little more support this week, so that's nice. But um, we're before we get started, we're we're gonna do one more week. Um, so we're we're gonna this will be this week, obviously, and we're gonna do one more public uh, public meeting next week. Um, so we're hopeful next week would be the last. That's our plan. So just in case I forgot, that's an update on that. Um, and as we normally do, uh, I think I'll turn it over right away to Ryan um, and he can give us our schedule update here. All right. Yeah, last week I was fishing. And, uh, <laughs> so, got a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 15 inch one. All right. Um, well, 61, let's see. Uh, we're, we're paving the Potter intersection out there uh, this week till probably Wednesday or so. Uh, and then on the. Um, uh, we're, we're put, our electrician is putting up light poles out there as well this week, uh, pulling wire and putting up those light poles. Um, we'll be doing some sodding and some rock landscaping with our crews, and um, we're looking to get the striping for the through lanes uh, later this week. Um, and then the last piece of underground, which will be televising that sanitary, probably later this week. Um, also talked about bringing in the, uh, the, the paving guys again to, to do a little bit east of the project. Uh, a little bit of a mill and overlay out there. And then um, uh, last week of August, we talked about bringing in the stripers to finish it off with the uh, with painting all the center, uh, the paint that goes down the center lane. Um, last piece is the work that will be remaining after this week. Um, next week, we're going to need to uh, turn off the signal at Plum, which I'm sure Corey will talk in length about here shortly. Mm -hmm. um, so next week, we'll we'll turn off the signal at Plum, and we need to do some modifications on those signal heads. Um, while I've got the mic, I think I'll just go right into Levy Road as well, because I know you guys are going to be asking about it anyway. Um, so down on Levy Road, we're working on medians and, and punch lists. Um, we've got signs going in later this week. We're pouring the, the driveway to Red Wing Grain late this week with some higher of the concrete so it can get back into use next week. And then uh, at the end of this week, uh, we're talking about Monarch paving that parking lot at Levy Park. Um, only thing that will be remaining after this week will we'll again be striping down there sometime next week, probably early next week, if everything goes according to plan and schedule and it doesn't rain like it's supposed to rain, I think two days this week. That's the plan and... All right, appreciate it, Ryan. Um, so going back to 61, then it um, it's going to be a little bit changing here. Um, the, you've got a, kind of some final work that's going to require a little bit of shifting of the traffic. Um, the most immediate change is going to take place tomorrow, and we're just going to widen the outside lane. Um, right now, the inside lanes are closed; those have to stay that way. We're still finishing work in Potter that that Ryan indicated, um, but to keep the streetlight installation moving on the south side. They want a little bit more room than the parking lane. And so we thought it makes a lot of sense just to push those barrels, say, to the inside or to the middle of the inside lane, basically just an extra wide outside lane. That'll let people kind of maneuver around those, those construction trucks in the parking lane. Um, it keeps the streetlight installation moving forward. Um, the, that, that is one of the main work scopes still remain on the south side. Um, in addition to that is the Plum Street signal. We didn't obviously do any work to the signal itself um, beyond some head reconfigurations but the new wi there is going to be new wiring installed and in order to do the new wiring we have to remove the old wiring and that obviously requires then the the you know shutting off that signal system we're estimating two days for that um, and the schedule for that is being driven by having potter finished um, and, and the cure time on, the, on that concrete within Potter. We're hoping that last pour of Potter will be tomorrow, um, the center median, and then the, a portion of ADM's driveway. Seven days then would bring us to next week Wednesday, and that's what we're targeting then to do this Plum Street signal shutdown. It'll be, like we indicated, two days. It's going to be a lot nicer than when we did it the first time because we'll still be able to facilitate right in, right out traffic. We just won't be able to let people cross 61 because there won't be a signal to do that. At Plum. At Plum. <clears throat> so those folks would have to go down to Bush Street, and Bush Street would be fully active, obviously. And, and so if you're the main movement that's going to be impacted is going to be the northbound, trying to get to northbound 61. Those folks would just have to go down to Bush Street. 
otherwise getting off of 61 you know if you're southbound that would be very easy um, likewise getting southbound on the southbound 61 from Plum again that right out will be easy it's just going to be the the crossing and the lefts um, so it'll be utilizing Bush Street or Broad Street or Broad Street on the library and then getting on to 61 northbound from there correct and so it'd be a real short duration and, and it's just necessary to do the, the, those signal improvements and you may ask why we didn't do it sooner. We didn't have all the infrastructure in place to do that. We've just now got all the conduit, the handholes in place on the north side, got to a point where we're starting to pull wires, and so now is the time that makes sense. And so we'll do a press release for that. We'll put up the signing like we have done, but just uh, be forewarned on that so that we're, we're targeting Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Plum would be black. Um, and then in addition, Ryan mentioned it, we're – we're, with the emphasis of this Friday um, being that targeted completion date, there's going to be uh, effort to get the striping done to designate the two through lanes. We get the center striping done, we get the parking striping done um, if we're able to with this weather here pending. And so the configuration at a minimum that we're shooting for for the weekend is the two through lanes are open in both directions. That would include the parking lanes on each side. Depending on the cure of the center left turn lane, that will warrant whether we have a center left turn lane for the weekend or not. Um, there is a chance we'll, we would be able to get that. Um, if not, it would just be coned off um, and we'd get the center left turn lane next week. The only oh. I'll be able to, to <clears throat> check on that by doing some breaks of the, of the beams that were cast and see what the strength is. And if the strength is sufficient on Thursday or Friday when we break that beam, then we will have two through lanes in each direction and the center left turn lanes open at uh, through through downtown. Yep. And then at a minimum, it looks like we're going to definitely have the two through lanes in each direction open. So. Yep. And then the intent with the two through lanes, that's permanent striping. Um, you maybe caught that Ryan mentioned we, we were targeting some striping at the end of this month. That's to, that's to finish the striping in, that, in the center left turn lane. Um, if we are able to reach sufficient strength, it's still... Um, green enough or, or early, you know, young enough concrete where it doesn't warrant to, to put the permanent striping in right away. And we're designating that as, as not a requirement to push. Um, we can obtain it either through temp striping or coning um, the functionality of that center left turn lane. So we're targeting the last week of August to get that permanently striped. So um, just know that we're not able to do all the permanent striping this week. We're going to get the three lanes open get the center left turn lane either end of this week or early next in a temporary configuration, and then we permanently stripe it the last week. Um, it just, it, it, it's going to prove better for the long term. It gives that permanent striping a better chance of, of success adhering to this new, newer concrete. So mm -hmm. another week of cure will make a big difference with that. So um, big picture, end of this month, we're looking at jobs done except for trees. And the functionality of the roadway is going to be all there except for the center left turn lane end of this week so this what that means is all traffic control west of broad street's gone all traffic control east of the project limits gone crossovers no more i mean it basically two, the two through back. lanes through town yep. both directions two lanes back so and in two weeks it'd be completely open completely open minus the trees yep So we're going to be on TV again next week. Yep. And then we're going to we're going to do one more next week. We thought uh, we do have that change with the, the Plum Street signal, which will be, um, you know, they said uh, on, on the outside two days. So we're thinking two day detour there to, to get people over to Bush and Broad um, while while that work's being done at, at Plum Street. So but through the weekend, both signals actually now that's a change. Um, big change is Bush Street signal going live again and fully active uh, signal system uh, with the um, with pedestrian crossings and everything else at Bush Street um, and uh, and you know right now it's just green for highway 61 that'll be back to a fully active signal so at Bush yeah and our thoughts with that is once you get the two through lanes it makes a lot of sense to push turn Bush back on so hopefully we we won't have the queuing issue of being down to one lane so that, that'll warrant so our intents the weekend bushes bushes back as well and back uh, safe for pedestrians as well and and the push buttons working and everything so and along with that you um we didn't mention it but there's be a lot of signage going on they'll be putting signs up for the parking 
restrictions downtown, the um, all the signage on the poles that needs to go up and, and on the mast arms, that's all kind of playing in the same time frame in the next week and a half here. Uh, two weeks getting all the permanent signage in place. So, right. yep. so a little bit of activity and, and if necessary, you know, after this weekend, um, even with the Plum Street, we're intending just to close the outside lane right at Plum. So just be a little barreling before, a little barreling after, but everything at Bush and west of there to Broad and likewise at Potter, that's all going to be fully open, you know, no work taking place there. So that's really our intent where it is after this weekend, it's going to be really concise areas of work, and it's just going to be the coning and the necessary safety closures at those areas. The rest of the job will will uh, will, will be striped and open, um, and that'll carry through. You know, I want to keep reemphasizing this. We have we have some corrective work we have to do on a job this size that even some is going to carry back over into last summer's work. But that's going to again be very isolated. Just um, focused in those areas and we we intend to do the same thing when the trees finally come in September just be an outside the enclosure you know a day or two and then everything would be removed again and um, so very short term from from this weekend on is our intent yeah we've probably seen seen some work done on or being done down on phase one that's part of some of the punch list stuff we also had some storm sewer issues we had to deal with on a connection down at uh, Hill Street um, so we're we're working through those punch list items as well. So that's all I have. That's all I have. Get any more? I guess next week then, if that's our last appearance, we'll be signing autographs afterwards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan will. Yeah. <laughs> Done with TV. Yeah. Any? Go ahead, Mike. I remember during the planning run up to all the. I remember during the planning run up to all this that we talked about benches, planters, all kinds of you know decorative finish kind of items. Uh, not that I want those, mm -hmm. but uh, are they coming? Uh, not they are, but they are not part of the contract with this project. But Brian uh, Peterson is kind of working on some of that stuff right now, including the banners. I think the banners are ordered now. Uh, and there should be here to put up. We're going to get some banners downtown. Um, he was working with Public Works on looking at uh, the movable. Remember, we went to movable flower pots rather than than uh, permanent kind of in those bump out areas. And then the benches. I think there's some bike rack um, ideas on where some bike racks could be remounted in. But it's all in, in trash receptacles as well. Um, but like I said, that's all outside of the pro this project. But we had a. We had a budget for it as part of the city's project, but it's not part of Meyer's contract to complete. Gotcha. But yeah, there will be some some of that stuff coming, and I, I think we'll see it. You know, we'll have they'll get done, and we'll have a fall to kind of put some things together on that, and probably a bunch more next year as well. Good question, though. Yeah, so I think that answer question, Mike. It, it not I don't think the intention is that all that's done this fall. It, it likely won't be able to be. So um, some this fall, and then. The carryover would be in the next year. Yep. Any other questions at all or comments? Go ahead, Patty. What about the light by the chamber? That's the one light that they haven't done work on at all. Yeah, I can. I, I'll just reiterate. So the um, th there's lighting additional to just the main street corridor. Um, some carry. There's a couple um, that carry down Bush Street. I think there's one on Plum. And then you may notice there's one on East Avenue, including there's one in the pork chop there, and there's still two west of, of Broad Street by the, the new um, Butterfly Garden and by the, the, the Econo Foods. All those are going to be going up here in the next week um, as well. The, the East Avenue one, Patty, that you're inquiring about um, more specifically, we patched that in with gray concrete last summer. Um, at the time, we, we weren't. Uh, weren't aware of what this matching downtown color was this brown concrete we have now formalized that and so um, the push there is to pour that back in the the new gun flint brown is which is the downtown color the brown color and then we'd install the light on top of that so um, there's another little patch on east avenue that's going to get replaced as well um, yeah, down by the library there. down by the library and we've carried now this new process on bush and plum so those those lights we have to pour the gunflint brown first, and then those will get installed over the next week. So, 
all all lighting is going to is going to take a, a ton of shape here over the next week to five days. Also, is there a plan to do a clean anything um, before or after it's all done, or as far just as like road cleaning, sidewalks? <clears throat> yeah, the the, the um, there is. So the the road cleaning, a lot of that will take take place with the striping. Um, uh, they like to have it as as clean as possible for that. So I think we've, we're targeting even doing some sweeping of the through lanes this week. To accommodate striping the through lanes and the parking lane the city's been helping us out with the sweeping and jerry wasn't present today so we'll have to work through the schedule but i mean that's it could be looking at as soon as tomorrow evening you know starting to sweep so the road will the road will be clean with the striping work um the sidewalk work <clears throat> there's actually a couple different phases to now where we we've started to do the caulking on the the joint between the building and the sidewalk that started to, to take shape yesterday He's kind of cleaning that area already, uh, just naturally uh, to do the caulking work. Um, but the, the, the interesting thing with the sidewalk is that we haven't completed all the scoring pattern yet. And we're not, we're not deeming that as, as being a real critical priority at this point, but that is gonna still have to t take shape. And so we actually have to grid up that tree grid area in two by two squares. Um, and so that's inherently gonna have a little construction dust and, and dirt associated with that. and. Um, so I, I guess to, to speak to you, the road will get clean with the striping. The sidewalk isn't quite there yet. Um, but I guess beyond that, we don't have any specific targeted effort to say sweep the sidewalk or something like that. Until we, yeah, until we get that saw cutting and, and right. scoring and stuff done so, and cleaned up. And, and Meyer's been doing a really good job cleaning up the debris and stuff, so I'm not overly concerned about that. But uh, but from the standpoint of still construction activity, creating dust and um, the the concrete work isn't isn't to a point yet where that's going to be completely completely uh, taken care of, I guess. So I hope that answered your question. Yep, go ahead, Mike. Will that brown? Will that brown color wear off? The gun, flip, the gun flip brown, the, the new downtown brown. No, it's, it's dye injected just as similar as the red and the tan. Um, we just, what the, the, a lot of the old concrete that's been poured was, was, a, was a powder dye back in the time when it was first installed. Nowadays, it's more of a liquid injection. And so it's just a real challenge to take these little chips and to try to match something old. And um, the city made a lot of effort this spring to kind of there's you know to, to solidify what this true new color is and we've identified gun flint brown as that color and so it has the same characteristics and properties as the new new tan and the new red we're pouring on main street just more brown in nature we're just trying to get as close as we can to the downtown the older downtown concrete and this brown is is where we got to this gun flint color and it's actually going to be the color we move forward with when we do a bunch of patching in the coming years because we're replacing our whole downtown lighting to the to match what 61 has um and that's going to be over a three or four year we're working on those plans right now isolated replacements but that when you do isolated replacements we're going to have parts where we have to saw cut out chunks of concrete and we needed to come to a color that we're gonna it's not going to be exact um, you can go down and look at patches near the library where we've tried it. Uh, we've tried this color by Oliver's where they had to put in a water service. Um, but I, I think it blends in fairly well with the, with the downtown color. And uh, it's, but like I said, it's not exact. And and they, they all wear a little bit differently. But uh, we, we got pretty close, I think. We got a good color scheme going now. So Good, I like it. Uh, if, what trees are spec uh, for all those planter areas so yeah, there there's it's a it's a varying array of maples and locusts and i mean i i don't have them all memorized they they're i can certainly share that information able to do that willing to do that um they're they're designed by blocks typically um and m looking at intersections as a quadrant so the same tree in all four corners um the mid blocks i can't i can't remember again if those are different or, or, or just kind of continuation so i think there's maybe three or four different species spec out there um and and uh i guess more just uh like i said kind of designed to have a quadrant be similar in in uh in presentation i guess but 
Um, it's a little different than last summer where the tree designs were more centered around the width of the boulevard and what tree would, would function, um, you know, I guess have the highest degree of survivability in that narrower, wider boulevard depending on how the sidewalk was shaped. This, this summer is a lot more structured in that it's a, the tree grade area is four feet. We're installing special structural soil to help those trees survive. So it's more just design, I guess, of the aesthetic than so more so driven by the functionality. So yeah, they do have, like Corey mentioned, they have each one of those tree grade areas has a special blended soil that's in, in that, uh, kind of in that square area there for that tree to have the best survival rate and uh so yeah for those that are, are really keeping track so at broad street we have um we have an armstrong maple that's going to be in front of the of the y in front of you mike and in front of the chamber of commerce um and then mid block we have um an ivory slick lilac that that's in front of you know the bella casas and um, the, the box roots de Leon's and then at the at the at the Bush Street quadrant um, that's again will be all four corners um, you have a, a honey locust imperial um, and then that continues actually all the way down to Plum Street um, and, and uh, even on to the east side of Plum Street um, I guess that's most of the corridor is going to be that uh, is that imperial and then we go back to then uh, Armstrong Maple at the Potter Street intersection. So certainly deciduous tree is more of the decorative flowering and, and colorful leaves. Sure, I appreciate that. Uh, one thing I just thought, one little point I'd like to make is that when the city has planted trees on, for instance, on Broad, uh, I, I think it'd be good to prune lower limbs higher because so we get kids hanging on them all the time and they break them off. Sure. And we're out there trimming them. Uh, so prune those bad boys a little higher. It would, it would help the tree, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like those tree choices. Good. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Any other questions? Anything else to add, you guys? Uh, I think um, uh, Ryan kind of gave a good update on levy. There are, just wanted to go over, there are punch list items down there as well that uh, we're going to see. You know, we got the railing up along the boathouses, but they're going to be back in maybe taking a railing section out to finish up some painting. You know, we have some touch up work, uh, some galvanizing and, and uh, repainting of some areas. So don't be alarmed if you start seeing things pulled down that were. That we made sure to get up for River City days, we we still got to do some fine finishing touches on things. So there'll be workers down there uh, doing a lot of punch list type things like that, um, and signage is still good. We got more signage to add. I think we're going to do some city signage and work with Red Wing Grain on some of the security signage, and um, so there's still work happening down there. Um, the roads opened up uh, right now. I think Broad Street is that. Uh, Cured out that they're pouring the they're pouring the last piece from broad on the levee the connection okay. between broad and levee um actually on the levee side and that's today they, they were pouring that this morning yeah. this morning okay and yeah, so levee's not exactly open yet but she can well it's closed actually at the railroad tracks closed at the railroad tracks right. okay and then um get that back open and then the, the roundabout's being used the signage is up um Ryan mentioned striping. I think the parking lot striping is probably planned for next week. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. The final striping by the boathouses. So, so just wanted to give give a little more update on levy, but I think that's all I've got. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks for. Oh, Mike, you got one more. I think the levy project is really a knockout. Uh, it's just beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're, it's. Uh, it was great to get that trail open before River City Days and have that ribbon cutting. And, and I know we weren't quite done with everything, but I think it, it worked well to have that for the weekend, for definitely for River City Days, and have that walkway. Heard good things about that trail going around there. So, and we're we're learning uh, the things that we need to do as far as signage and making sure people stay on the trail and respect Redwood Green's property. I want to reiterate that it's great that they gave us that easement, but please and use it, stay off the road, use the trail, use the bike trail, 
but stay on the trail and and uh, don't wander into the into the Redwind Green areas there where they're where, where they have to do their work. So, thank you.